Welcome to the Monday, June the 5th, 2023 meeting of the Montpelier Design and Review Committee. We'll let committee members and staff introduce themselves. Eric Gilbertson, member. Benjamin Cheney, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Steve Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Is Liz here or no? No, Liz nope. will be absent today, and right now we actually don't have anybody remotely except for Orca Media that's streaming okay. and the um, minute recording secretary. So we still do need to speak into the microphones, including applicants when they come up to the table, um, so that the recording and the live streaming can work. But everybody is here in person tonight. Speaking of remotely, we still have to let you go through the remote meeting procedures. I know. <laughs> Sorry. Nope, it's okay. They're all queued up. So this is for people who are on watching via Orca. Um, here we go. Okay. So for those of you viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's design tonight's meeting via the Zoom platform. You can do that either by using this link here. You can type this right into your web browser, and that will give you both video and telephone access options. Um, or you can call in using this phone number and plugging in this meeting ID when prompted, um, and you will be able to speak to us and hear everything that's going on over your phone. Um, if you're trying to access the meeting and you're having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, if you do log in via Zoom, please know turning on your video is optional. And we ask that you please remain muted um, when you're not speaking. This will help reduce background noise. If you do uh, dial in to Zoom over the phone, star six will mute and unmute you. Um, all right, I'm going to skip over these other things because we don't actually have anybody on remotely right now. If uh, I do find out that the public is unable to access the meeting, um, then it will need to be continued to a time, place, and certain. I'll hand the meeting back over to the chair. At this point, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. I'll second. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Aye. Aaron. Ben. And Steve, the agenda is approved. And unless anybody has anything else to add at this point, we can go to the first application for 73 Main Street. Heaney Family Main Street, LLC, replacement of a rooftop skylight. Hey, Jim, go ahead come and up come to up the... to the table and yeah, describe you can... your application. And you can adjust the microphone as you see fit so that it works for you. Okay, does that work? Yeah, he'll be able to tell. <laughs> All right. So the application is to replace the skylight in the atrium at 73 Main Street, right there. Um, and it's uh, it's an old steel frame skylight. My dad had it refurbished in the early 80s, and it's, it's done its job. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it leaks. We've been putting plastic over it for the last couple of winters, and it's just... It, it's just the scope and the scale of this project is large enough that I've put it off as long as I can. But it's, um, so it's a cow wall uh, skylight that they would fabricate for us and um, it'd be, uh, the change in the design from what's there is, what's there now is a hip roof and um, we're proposing a straight, a gable roof that would give us, right now there's a vent in the center of the hip roof which whenever anything goes wrong with the fan unit or anything in it, it's really difficult for maintenance. Um, with a gable roof, it would let us put a fan in the end and just much safer and easier to, to deal with issues when something goes wrong with the fan. So, um, and it seems more practical. So that's really the application. The new unit will also be, it'll be a lighter structure um, and uh, will be a, a much more energy efficient structure than what's there. looking for this thing and I can't see it no where where is it it well it's up in the middle it's over that internal it's atrium that part yeah okay what's the material model now yeah it's uh, I've got old photos Eric it's uh, steel this was when it was rehabbed in the 80s oh 
Okay. Yeah. Like a greenhouse. Yeah, it's like a greenhouse. Steel frame. It's got the old glass. I think it's got the wire in it. What are you going to do with glass? Yeah. The new one will actually be, I, I, we're shooting for something that's more translucent and not clear glass. Having it clear really overheats that space um, badly. You're still going to have light coming in. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Feel that light coming down. It's really yeah, nice. It is nice. Um, so the new one's a steel frame also, or? I think it's an aluminum frame. Aluminum frame. Yeah, that's why it's, it should be lighter. We've had Black Rivers worked on the uh, design with um, Structures Unlimited. So it's a straight gable roof. There's yep. no hip on the end. Correct. Is there a picture of what it look, would look like with the straight so gable? Is, that's the new one. Right? OK. That's but the that's new with the vent on the end. It's yes. It's a representation of what it will look like. Oh, on this some one. other building, right? Or is that what it's going to look like? Sure. Is that what the new one's going to look like? Um, is that what? I'm no, at? that's a no. That was part of the rehab of the old one. Oh, okay. Now the new one's in the hopefully the plans you have. So, yeah, uh, yeah. All Audra the, didn't the, give us the plans. Those went to the building permit file. I didn't uh, see those. Do you want? Um, to? Oh, okay. So she gave us the photos. So that was the original. I got it. So this was the original, this was the rehab in the 80s. Okay. So the, the, rid, the ridge height, <laughs> the ridge height is about the same as it is now? It is. It's just a straight gable in, mm -hmm. instead of a hip. Right. And actually, because it won't have the fan on the top, it'll actually be a little shorter. But the, I mean, the skylight's the same height, but the fan unit goes above it yep. on the current one. And that's the ventilator is going. Is that a double or a triple so this is thickness a cal wall? Two and three quarters inches is okay. the spec. It, they make it in like a honeycomb design, and it yeah. comes, you can get it like two, three, four, I mean, different thicknesses. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll ask because I wasn't aware there were options. This is what they expect, so I said, okay. Does anybody have any questions about the skylight? Ben, can I see that? Yeah. The paper is the um, for the new one. Those are all pictures of the old and then what's yeah, there those existing. Are so that old one is what was described for the National Register listing, probably? Right. And that's okay. what we have pictures of. Yeah, this and we'll be a picture. It's just a straight gable roof instead of a hip. Yeah. Okay, if nobody has any other questions, I can go through the criteria. There's a criteria sheet, and I'll just read down through it. This is in the, the building permit file, right? Right. So you can have Glad you brought it. <laughs> so the criteria number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Uh, for historic structures. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property should be avoided uh, unless it's unavoidable. <laughs> Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated features shall be repaired rather than replaced, if possible. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a character defining feature, new features shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments, uh, shall not be approved. This application is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties, acceptable.
consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes and immediate areas. Conceal rooftop equipment and features on flat roofs from eye level view from adjacent public rights of way and from the ground level of any adjacent properties. This application is acceptable. And lastly, windows and doors on historic structures, character defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features such as trim, sash, and molding shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character defining windows, doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style, materials, and architectural features acceptable and again staff suggests that a skylight is not the same as a window and that architectural materials and features above have de been dealt appropriately with the proposal yeah so i didn't know if the, the so, committee wanted this to eat that yeah. to be even be I applicable just, it, you know you could say not applicable or acceptable that's that okay just acceptable is fine yeah. so all in favor of the application speak your names Eric. martha and steve it is approved, four to zero. Since you're here, Tim, can I get you to sign the form once okay. Steve's done, and then I'll be able to just put that in the file. And uh, thanks. Uh, Audra is out of the office for the next couple of days, so you might not get your permit quite as quickly as usual. Um, but we'll try and get it to you as soon as possible. Let me just sign it in that block, but don't blow my name. Okay, thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Good luck. You go to the next application for 100 Main Street, City Line Realty, for the Indian Nepali Kitchen Review, new wraparound wall mm -hmm. sign. Hi, if you want to come up. Go ahead and come up and describe you talk, your application. Okay. I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, you can just give us your name so we have it for the record and then describe the sign you want to put up. Okay. I think we already sent the, um, what do you call the... Uh, they, so they have the whole application. They have uh, all of it. They just want to hear your description okay, of it and yeah, your I, name so that we have know who's been talking. Uh, yes. My name is Tira Giri. I am the owner of Namaste Indian Nepali Kitchen. And then we would like to put the new sign on there, uh, Namaste Indian and Nepali Kitchen. Uh, on the side, we want to put Namaste, and then on the front side is Indian Nepali Kitchen. Like that. And it's going to be, I think it's a wood frame maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so they have copies of everything that you gave us downstairs. Yeah. Who's doing your sign for you? Um, next door, what? Uh, uh, a sign design. Sign design. Sign design. John yeah. Miller. Yeah, yeah, John. Yeah. Nice, an eight-inch letter. We finally. <laughs> <laughs> an appropriately sized letter. Yes. And I like the. Personally, and I know I don't make the decision, I like the wraparound aspect of this. So it has no, it their is. full name. So but you it's, can see it from. But you can see it from both sides, but both it's not sides. repetitive. Yes. So I thought that was a really neat design. Just my little personal thing. Anyone have any questions? Fits in the sign band, okay. it sits off the surface. Okay, then we can go through the criteria for this one. The size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties. Acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands. Acceptable. 
If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. This wraparound is acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining building materials on the building. Acceptable. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings. Acceptable. All in favor of the sign application, speak your names. Ben. Martha, I'm a yes. And Steve, four to nothing in favor. So just like with Tim, if you can just sign, there's a block here. So if you can just sign here, and then um, we'll get that permit to you as soon as possible. Do you want us to email you when it's ready so you can just come pick it up? Or do you want us to mail it? We can come pick it up. Okay. When will we be ready? Hopefully this week. Hopefully this week. Um, I just the person who usually issues the permits, the actual physical documentation, is out the next two days. Um, so hopefully we'll get both of these done Thursday or Friday. Awesome. Thank you. Have a great rest of your evening. And we can move forward to the next application, 149 State Street, George Estes. And I probably should recuse myself. Um, well, so George or, and I had a discussion about this. As long as okay. you explain your relationship, because you don't have an, a financial interest in the building. Yes. Okay. I don't think, I mean, somebody else okay. may have a dis point about it, but I don't think you need to recuse yourself. <laughs> Well, it's a, we have a business relationship uh, between insurance and he does half my building work <laughs> for me. No, probably 80, 90, I call it 90%, yeah. at least. Quite but this application is for a building yes. he owns. Building he owns. Yeah. Okay. So. I don't have any problem with it. So my name's George Estes. Um, I have a building down in Montpelier at 149 State Street. Um, here and trying to follow through with what you need to do for the compliance of the building. I'm not sure what you're doing that is within our purview. I'm uh, seeing bathrooms, stairways, bedrooms. So for this, as described on the, on so the, the, on the agenda, it's just the railing. Got it. So the railing aspect of it, um, the insurance required that the railing for the upper portico sort of balcony area needed to be both lower and have the spacing in it reduced um, because there are people in there and part of it is gonna be converted to a residential use. Um, and they needed that done ASAP. So um, if you look at the far away pictures, you can, I think there's some in there, you can see, it might even just be on the front, what was there originally. And it's also in, the, it's actually in the picture that, that Steve brought the railing is in that actually same painting, painted photograph. Um, and George has had to add some new stuff sort of behind the historic railing. So he hasn't removed the historic railing. He's added new sort of trellising behind it. And then the two bars on top um, uh, to, to get that height without having a weird sort of trellis thing higher than that historic George, are those railing. bars already there? The upper bars were not. Okay, so this is just a, a, right. a showing were, of what it would look like. Right, on the lower section of the building, it has another picture that shows where the, the railing that I actually copied was, and that's where I got the idea of how to go. So code requirements are that the top be 42 inches high, and that there be no space wider than taller or wider than four inches. So if you look Which, at the one pictures from the inside, you can still see that historic railing on the outside of there through the gaps. He didn't remove any of that. Yes.
rather than put another lattice on the inside, had you thought of just putting another rail at the bottom to reduce that space? Well, the space between the lattice on there is now a six by six, and the space under the rail was six inches also, so I had to take the lattice work and have it hang down below the rail, and so there wouldn't be the space at the deck instead of it being six inches off the ground now it's only two and a half and i came up to the top of the railing just so to kind of keep the old but i wanted to be in compliance with the four inch off the deck too yeah because all of those x's are six, it was six inches on right. the original so you had a six inch space every place you had a triangle so we had to put a new lattice that sort of uh filled in those gaps. Otherwise, he would have had to run strapping all the way down or something. Well, the, the lattice meets the four inch requirement, doesn't the it? I mean, new the new one. The, the, is the old lattice wider yeah. Yeah. than four inches? Yeah, it's six inch, six inch by six inch squares. Oh, okay. And that's... That's why this one became more complicated. <laughs> so as I talked to Michelle, she said that what the requirements are the four inches. So the gap between the railings from here to that is three and a half, then three and a half, and then it comes to 42 and a quarter inches to the top of yeah. the rail. George, to follow up Ben's question, uh, I also was a little confused when I read this. What are you doing to the building inside? What changes are you making? Excuse me, say that you method. What changes are you anticipating inside? The changes, basically, um, the office spaces that are in there now, um, there's some spaces that, because of the way it's been working, that I haven't been able to fill the occupancies of the office space, so I'm trying to turn it into a B and B, basically where some of the building it still has its commercial office space and then it's now going to be able to have a overnight like monday to thursday i'm trying to get the legislatures or someone like that that would take the rooms um basically the only thing uh, it has a pre-existing porcelain tub and old fixtures that are in there only thing i'm doing is taking that tub out and putting a new fiberglass unit, putting in a new vanity and a new uh, toilet in so the bathroom. you're anticipating a short-term rentals rather than a long-term lease. Right. For, for like 600 square feet of the building, the rest of it will still say commercial. That's going before the board <clears throat> Okay, I'm just curious. Yeah. I just didn't understand it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and I, I'm guessing this work on these railings is, is done at this point. Yes, because it's a retroactive application. Right. And I, I, I didn't even think about it until after. And then Michelle came to the building and she said, okay, George, this is what you need to do in compliance. And then I had a letter from my insurance company and they said, George, you need to do this or you, you, we can't cover the building. And there was a couple other things that they, I had to do for the insurance company. So immediately I did it, not realizing about, I knew about the size and the dimensions of what I could use to make it compatible to people to be out there, but not realizing I had to come between zoning board to tell me I automatically just did it because I want to make sure the tenants in the building, if somebody went out there that the insurance company wasn't going to decline me. Because yeah, this space is currently accessible to the office users. Yes. Yeah. What is the lattice in the corner there? because on the corner of the building is where the electrical entrance comes into the building. And talking with Michelle that there's gonna be a point where you can't have somebody on that porch that can actually reach out and grab a hold of electrical wire. So on that side where the electrical entrance comes into the building, she suggested I put a little wing or something to keep people from actually being able to reach around the corner and grab the electrical Are you going to do that same thing on the other side? Uh, you, the side to the right of it, you can't reach the power line because of the pole, the round 
No, I oh. meant if looking at the building, you've done this on the left. Are you going to do it on the right as well? well I didn't plan on it, no. Because there's no electrical service there that I had to accommodate would, to. Would you be willing to if they asked oh, you to, just to means. have it symmetrical? Yeah, to make it look, yeah, to look at uniform, of course. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. No. fine just leaving the the one section with the protection and then that way you maintain s similar view from the different, different point when you're looking at it from the state house going going in that direction that is a good point <laughs> well it is yeah it's just you know it's it's a minimal amount of lattice that's put up there for protection Anybody have any questions or suggestions or? One thing you would have the option to do, and it's your call, if you wanted to have the appearance of what it used to be, plus the top two rails, if you, if it was, if the interior lattice made it more crowded or didn't give it the appearance you wanted, you could spray paint the interior lattice black so that when you're looking at it from the street, you wouldn't see the black. The only thing you would see would be the, the white. And again, that's, that's up to you. And again, that's an option. Don't have to, but if you if you like the way that looked better, I mean, you could do a trial panel and see. And again, that's just your option. Okay, because the biggest flaw that I was trying to figure out how to deal with it if I change the lattice work, I can put lat slats in between the individual ones and then everything would become two by two, but still under the bottom rail, yeah. I have to come up with some solution to be able to f occupy so nobody can get under or be able to um, so I was trying to figure out what would be the easiest, and because of the old-fashioned rails where they stop, there's that space, so I just let the lattice work run down low. So I would have to, I mean, the integrity of the building I don't want to disturb because I yep. love the old building, but I mean, I was just trying to make it so I was in compliance, <laughs> basically, you know I mean? I think your solution works, George. And again, the only reason to paint it would be appearance. If you like the way it looked better, then again, that's an option. Right. You can do it or don't have to do it. And that would, do you think that would still work? You wouldn't see the black even where it's below the white? You think it would still fade it, away? It, it, fa it'll fade away. Yeah. Because it'll just make the white stand out more. It would make the original white stand out more. Okay. And then the two top, two top, Obviously, the horizontal rails, she would leave the same. Anybody else have any other comments, questions, suggestions? Yeah, it's a shame they didn't know about, you know, 2023 codes back in 1893. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Of course, the average height then was about five, five. <laughs> so, you know, like a thirty-inch railing when you're five-five is different from a forty-two yeah. when you're six-four. <laughs> I think painting the inner one black would probably be a good, good thing to do. Okay. And then again, what would happen was you would see the original, and the black one would sort of fade away. I mean, if you look at if you look at the picture there, I mean the you look at the spaces between the the lattice and it's it's darker. Okay, I'll read down through the criteria. 
exterior design and materials of new construction or, or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a character defining feature, new features shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments, such as sandblasting, shall not be approved. This application is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features detailing an overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features of, to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. And architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building, shall be considered in the alteration of a building acceptable. And lastly, porches and stairs on historic structures. The location of porches, ramps, and stairs shall be placed in a manner that does not impact or undermine the original and significant ornamentation or detailing of the existing building. Stairs, ramps, and porches shall employ suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with the historic and important design features of the existing buildings and new construction. Stairs and ramps shall be designed in a manner with details and materials that provide the most sensitive and compatible structure that fits the building design and layout acceptable. All in favor of the application, and I'll make a notation here that an applicant has the option to paint inside lattice a black color if it improves the visibility of the original lattice work. the original, I'll call it exterior lattice. All in favor, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Martha, I'm a yes. And Steve. Vote is four to zero in favor. And I can get you to come up and you can sign this one below my name. Okay. And I'll hold on to the form and report to DRB at 7 about it. But that's going to be a, just a minor item for them. Just to keep going because they have to issue the permit for the larger project. George. Thank you, George. Thank you very much. Sure, I got a couple extras that just throw them in your file Do you have if you need. Thing? You want another one? I got some extras. By the way, steel treads appeared today. <laughs> oh, <you did? laughs> I think you have the first page of the form still underneath your agenda. Right under your agenda. 
Yeah. Awesome. Sorry. Nope, that's okay. I'm just gonna. Thank you. Good luck. Everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from the May 15th meeting. Yep, and I'm going to make a motion to approve them. I'll second. All in favor, speak your names. Martha. I'm going to abstain that one. Yeah. Yes. Ben. And Steve. Minutes are approved for May the 15th. Thank you. Does anybody have anything else to add? If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> do I hear a second? Yep. <laughs> All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Oh, Eric. Yeah. Ben. <laughs> and Steve. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming.